it played up in the top lane. We expect the Corky to go mid, but also Jungle Kiana is a possibility. While it doesn't have the greatest early game clear, I do remember Xersei also picking up very early on on the Silas in the jungle, which is another champion that sort of mirrors this Kiana pick. Well, and additionally, he's just consistently been an innovator historically. We haven't seen that as much on the Splice lineup, but we know it's something that he still holds to. He's always willing to try new picks in solo queue. And going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Skarner from Trick, you have to imagine, will be a bit difficult given struggles that Kiana has in early clear. Let's see what Shaka want to go for here. The hover over on the Jin, but instead the lock-in of the Aatrox. I wonder if that's hinting at what's to come, if the Splice maybe have a Jin up their sleeve that Shaka are calling out right now. Yep, gonna pick up the soul lanes and junglers now for Shaka, waiting on that bottom lane, interestingly. We've seen a lot of early bot lane picks, but with the likes of the Yumi and the Zaya banned away, a lot of those high priority duos have been taken off the board. I do like this Nart pickup, however, for Vizichachi. He's played that three times already in this split, and does have a favorable matchup in towards that Aatrox strong range presence in terms of the laning phase, but also big team fight abilities, and the ability to throw people against a wall, which, when you have a Kiana on your team, seems very good! Two wall-based champion ultimates. Of course, fantastic. And for Visit Chachi, once again, we talk about him as uh, a player that can be a defining factor for his team, both good and bad. But when you look at the best of Visit Chachi back on, let's say, on Spice currently, whether it was on Shalka or Unicorns of Love, the Gnar was always a huge champion because he always could be that game changer, that big single flank ultimate that could decide a game, going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Aatrox on the top side of the map. But for now, let's go into the second ban phase. Supports are actually going to be the focus, both the Pike and the Nautilus band away. Now, not surprising when you look at the names on the bottom side of the map. It is Ignar and Norskaren, so the less hook or playmaking champions you can give them, usually the better. Yeah, still gonna be looking at the Rakan. Immediately as I say it though, that does get banned away. Now we're going way down on the on terms of support priority here. Thresh is a champion I think Ignar would love to get his hands on. We've seen Norskaren play that pick in the past as well, but it might just be uh, fairly, you know, go back a couple of patches and see a lot more of the likes of Braum in this game. And that's, come on, come on. I say the Braum, they banned it away. We're seeing Thresh this game. I'm gonna call, I'm gonna guarantee call you. that a prediction is what we'll give you the credit for. Taking their time now. Of course, the Kiana is, the thing I forgot to mention is the Kiana is basically now set to go to jungle, given the picks that we have so far, short of some crazy flex with this Corky. But the crazy flex are always an option. Now, not normally something we think about when we think about Splice is, you know, crazy flex picks all over the place, something we usually reserve for G2, but definitely an option this game. The Tom Kench, really the only pick that we can be most certain, should be going into the support position after the most recent set of nerfs. But now Upset gets his pick for the remaining 80 carries. And it looks like Sivir may just be the option, can be the rock for his team as they move later into the game. I really like, I would love to see a Sivir here. The movement speed bonus, Whoa! but no! It's Ignar Blitzcrank, baby! I love it. Ooh. There was the option for the handshake on the passive laning supports. They could have picked Tom Kench, they could pick something else on the opposite side. Most of those things banned, but no. Ignar getting the Blitzcrank. It's been a long time since we've seen him play this champion, but he is, has a legacy here. He is a hook king. The best part about it is he gets the two-for-one special up against the Tom Kench. Tom Kench eats an ally. You just hook him on both in there. Now, if they lock in the Sivir alongside it, this comp could be really, really scary if you just gave it all the movement speed. But instead, it's going to be the Kai'Sa. And the interesting thing about Kai'Sa Blitzcrank as a lane is that you have so much burst damage. If you land one Q, that's one CC to proc Kai'Sa's passive. Then you get the knockup as well. You instantly cycle through that Kai'Sa passive for the bonus damage and also get that isolated Cathian Rain as well. So a lot of of damage and almost insta kills if you can land hooks in lane. See what the option is, but there's the Jin. Now picked up for Kabe. See exactly how he wants to utilize this champion. See what most of the pros have been using on him. Of course, small buffs to his W, I believe, in terms of cooldown is a bit more active now in the early game. Yep. Also, the root duration went up 0.25 seconds at all ranks, which seems like a small number, but is actually very impactful. One of the main reasons we saw Skarner come back into play uh, back, back last year was because of CC increase on his E. Now, Jin also will be able to set up from range. That's always one of the biggest strengths of this pick is that long range utility potential. Ender. I just want to put a pin in this because I want you to talk about it as soon as we get in the game, and that's Kiana Jungle. Oh, yeah. I need to know literally everything. <laughs> but at this moment, you can skip it. You can give me the cliff notes later. Talk to me about these team compositions. We've talked a little bit about the bot lane, but the rest of this, it just feels like with a Blitzcrank in the game, 
we are set up for some explosive moments. Yeah, I mean, Shalka obviously have the pick tools of the Blitzcrank, and I think if they can take control over the river in this game, that's when they become so, so powerful with the ability to speed at you with the likes of the Skarner or Flash Hook with this Blitzcrank. That's something that has to be on the minds of Splice. Whereas Splice, we already mentioned earlier, this team loves walls. Chuck people into walls, you're going to have so much team fight damage. <laughs> and just blast them. I just love that your breakdown is we got a river team and we got a wall team, and we're gonna see who gets the And we have Kiana in the game too. Elements everywhere. <laughs> a game of elements, folks. Uh, best way to break it down. We are gearing up for our third game of the day. over that one. It was strong first <laughs> chance. Follow-up uh, not ideal, but you might have more reasons to cheer here. Of course, Shalk at 7-4, and four, Splice 8-3, and three. and as interesting as the standings are, as close as these two teams are, there's a Kiana in the jungle, and my god, I want to understand why. <laughs> Do I have to worry about this in solo queue, Ender? Uh, possibly, because one of the weaknesses of Kiana in the jungle is that early clear is not actually all that great. You know, early on, you will fall pretty low in terms of HP. She doesn't have any sort of sustain built into her kit, even though she has some AoE damage inside of her Q. She does not have that sustain, which is a little bit of a concern on this type of a champion. So we expect to see her maybe start on this top side of the map, clear away her three camps on that top side of the map, and maybe look for an early reset, because once you can finish off your jungle item, I think that's when things get a whole lot easy for you on this pick. And of course, uh, 26 July, hmm, LCK uh, playing a little Blitzcrank. No surprise to see Ignar pick it up here. And if, if you've been watching around the world, if you've been uh, keeping your eyes on LCS Academy for whatever reason, you'll have noticed that Dardak has already played this champion twice. So there's a bit of tape, but I, I remain unconvinced by the viability. As I say, though, is classically an innovator. And uh, you have to imagine the Splice lineup would not have put it on stage unless they knew exactly what they were going to get out of it. Yeah, I mean, the interesting thing is I was expecting this pick to, to rise to priority because of its ability to flex into the jungle, where you maybe steal it away from a player like Abadage, and then you have the option, if you get put into a bad matchup in the mid lane, to then put it into the jungle or into the top lane. But Splice, in this case, they just went ahead and locked that in right off the bat alongside a mid laner. So they were very telling in which lane this was actually going to be going to. And you can already see it now. Like, you're looking not terrible. You got a pretty sizable leash here from Nar right off the bat. Uh, but we will continue to track this guy as he moves through the jungle. Yeah, the red buff start as well, just making it a little bit easier with that additional health regen trick, of course. Uh, unsurprisingly, we'll clear a little bit faster. Skarner, of course, notoriously on those fires. Just a clearing machine. Yeah. The uh, AoEs, especially on the side of Zer Sam, just gonna keep following this. Kiana jungle, we've, we've seen enough, Skarner, I'm gonna say here. Does very well against the AoE camps. You know, you can reset your Q cooldown with the W. Now look right, for a water going game lane. Abadage, is he gonna be able to dash to safety? Has been locked up, huge damage now coming in. Zer Sam with a large huge first blood! That is not what I expected. You told me low clear early game, you told me it's gonna suffer, but uh, He's flourishing. I mean, here's the thing. Usually you don't expect to see Kiana go for these super early game ganks, committing the flash to secure that kill here. But now all of a sudden it changes a lot of things for Xerse. He has the sweeper too, so he's going to keep Abadagi guessing where he's going to be on the map. And because Trick went for a full clear right off the bat, it means that Xerse can pretty easily pick up the Scuttle Crab on the bottom side and continue to take these camps that aren't going to set him low in the jungle. And Humanoid kept his flash as well, so everything coming up in the favor of Splice at this stage of the game. We'll take a look back from his pro view, right.com slash pro view, if you want to watch the Kiana jungle. Yep, picks up the Water Blade in the river, has his W come back up, so he picks up the Rock for that execute damage. It's skill. Yeah, and honestly, late game, it's like impossible for me to understand 100% what Kiana's doing. I just, she just pushes a lot of buttons, it looks cool, <laughs> but early game, that may, that champion looks super cool when you actually play it out and use all of the actives to take a new element, to dash back in, to reset the passive, and Cersei not only will get through his first clear relatively healthy, will grab a kill as well, and now he goes from honestly suffering very early on to, to flourishing here as he goes through these camps. Yeah, pops over to an earlier level four there, also thanks to the gank in the mid lane, we picked up some experience as well, so very good start for him. Now, expect to see him go for a reset relatively soon and then get back to clearing his jungle. His Krugs are going to be respawning very soon, which is why we see Trick walking into this top side jungle. He uses the, the blast cone right there, and if he had had a yellow trinket instead of the sweeper, I would have loved to see him walk up and put that deep ward on the Krug camp to have exact timing. 
understanding of when Xersei was going to be on that side of the map, but he has relatively good knowledge of when that camp respawns, because once you get vision, you will see that go ahead and pop back up, and very nicely done there. As exciting as Kiana and Xersei are at this point in the game, I do want to highlight Trick a little bit, because while Xersei is very much the catalyst for early game, it's the same story on the opposite side for Trick, and Trick has been very good most of the time. Sadly for him this game, it's a bit of a tough situation as his uh, mid lane has already been put behind and he's running out of options, but inevitably, still that pressure is there that we have to keep our eyes on Trick. You have to expect the Skarner to get more done here in the early game, and that's a big burden to bear. Yeah, no, Trick has been clearing relatively quickly, hits five a little bit faster than Xerse right there, and we're waiting to see him get that level six mark. Once he does get that, the Predator Boots set up for a very easy gank. Unless you wanted to play around bottom lane, I think that's the only lane you could maybe look for a gank before that level six mark comes around from Trick. Yeah. Of course, for both Trek and Ingar, obviously the potential to get a lot of play is started. Yet to see any kind of crazy hooks coming in from Ignor on the bottom side of the map. And as you mentioned, River Control is going to be pretty crucial if they want to get maximum value out of this Blitzcrank. Or they can just go in for a bit of damage. Norse Karen spits him right back up, but there's still four stacks on him. Ignor going to flash forward, but not going to be too much. Overstaying is welcome, and now the time catch continues forward. Wants to get more damage down. Upset now threatening. Skarner moving his way down. The route will connect a huge exchange of cooldowns, but... No doubt that uh, Shao could come out on top. Yeah, the big win there, of course. Kabe losing his flash. It makes it so, so risky now playing throughout this lane. Trick also walking inside the enemy jungle right now. Humanoid is relatively low on this Corky, but still has the flash, still has the, the Valkyrie as well. Just uses it there. Does Trick want to go? Getting much lower. Going in. That's a Predator. Just run him down, little Scorpion. Humanoid. Oh, nice. Got him. Big Jukes. Got the flash though, good play Whoa. in the end, but now the TP bot side visit, Chachi is here! Everyone is now coming into the fight, Splice time to find one kill, Oduwamne shows up just in time to say goodbye, Splice finding two quick kills. Yeah, just a great call there from Splice, they see Trick go very hard in this mid lane to make the play, there's that deep ward placed when Norskaren and Kabi were pushing up earlier, so it sets up for a very good TP. Thereby visit Chachi and Xersei just passing right alongside Trick, meant that he was able to slither into this bottom lane unseen. Oof. And overall, just fantastic once again from the side of Splice. Excited to see what exactly happened in that replay. Ender, take us through it. Take us through Okay, well, we got Meganar already charged up. Poor Chachi coming in from the side. Remember, no flash on Ignar. So, well, the ult against the wall didn't exactly work, but it didn't exactly matter, Dracos. <laughs> Does it matter? Remember, folks, Ender, premier analyst of the LEC, broke it down for us. Wall comp? Wall good. River comp. Where'd they stand? Next to a wall. Bad news. Splice come out on top. Wall team. Splice also just had more people there. <laughs> Maybe mattered a little bit more than the walls. Uh, but I like this from Trick. Wall Down team. in the bottom lane, remember, no flash on Kabe. There is flash ultimate on Trick. So the second Kabe steps away from Norskaren and doesn't have access to the immediate devour, that could play a role, but not this time. And I'm going to be completely honest, this is the dream early game for the side of Splice. Oh, yeah. You've got Gnar winning on the top side. Oduwamne matched TPs and got nothing, so Gnar continues to get further and further ahead. And additionally, the Kiana is a champion that we don't really know what to expect from the jungle, but when she's fed in mid lane, she kills a lot of people, so I'm going to assume it's somewhat similar in the jungle. It, it definitely is, especially because you just get to roam much earlier when you're playing jungle Kiana. That's sort of your job here, so once Zersei clears out his camps, he can just start to get inside the enemy jungle, look to mess around with Trick a lot here. Now that he has finished his warrior enchantment, like, the jungle here is super, super easy. You basically one-shot a lot of these AoE camps uh, with the QWQ right there. And it's only going to be easier, too. We'll see if he wants to optimize or itemize into some lethality. Of course, not going to get nearly as much gold as he would in a solo lane position, or normally. He does have a lot of kills now under his belt. See what else he can do. But actually, putting a lot of attention to the top side as well was... And I got to say, Xersei versus Trick, right now, everything going in the favor of Xersei. He's been to the top side, consistently clearing out vision for Vizichachi. He's been to the bot side for those big plays. And right now, once again, uh, Xersei's... Fantastic early game is paying off for Spice. Yeah, has an experience advantage over Trick as well. So everything going very nicely for them at the moment. The other thing we have to keep in mind for Spice as a team is when you go for this Corky pick, also the Narn, the side, and their side lane strength is very strong the later we do get into this game. Uh, Jin, maybe not the best guy, just perching up in the mid lane in terms of overall wave clear, but overall they can look to play through these side lanes and then have Xersei just sit with one of them and look for those explosive plays because Kiana has so much burst damage with that ultimate. It gives them a lot of ability to explode come to mid game if they can find picks inside. And you see the water blade prepped and ready in humanoid. That is totally a bait. Abadage does not take it out, however. 
walking down to the brush to try to set up. So with the prep water blade, can just fish for the snare here, see where he wants to go. Could also just take the cloud drake because he has priority on the bottom side of the Yeah, map. that's what I was thinking for Zerse right there. They're really trying to make something out of the last few seconds on the package right there. Instead, he really wants to make this gank happen. Still coming around. Zerse on the backside trick is here as well. Have to be careful. And they're just going to disengage the play. Keon, of course, so many dashes, and the kid is able to just walk away from that one. He might just fish for a kill on a trick. Yeah, remember, any mid 2v2 can immediately become a 4v2 in favor of Splice because they have the Tom Kench, and Kabe or Skarn with a little bit of pressure in that lane at the moment can be the first one to start running up in towards this river. So it makes it very, very hairy for, like, Shaw could ever try and look for any play around this lane. Well, this is difficulty, right? Is we talked about how much that a Skarner and Blitzcrank would like to have river control, would like to have a vision advantage so they can just set up for these surprise picks. X flash, ignore. Oh. Grab the hook. He juked him. Norskarin wasn't ready for it. He uses the thick skin, but I think it's too little too late. Ignore breaks the shield. That's a new mechanic. Finds it. I love it here, seeing the new mechanic in worse work there. Of course, Ignar's ultimate on the Blitzcrank will tear through any shield, no matter how big, no matter how small. And the damage is applied after the shield goes down, too. So he's able to use that to kill Secure there on towards the Tom Kench. Makes this matchup even better. <laughs> that was the most, I'm sorry, that was like the most <laughs> solo Q bait of all time. I, I love that that worked. The classic just channel hex flash. It's like putting a pink horn <laughs> in place. Puts his hand up right. <laughs> <laughs> Get North back scan, here. Scan, it's like I've been bamboozled. <laughs> like wait, I didn't think he'd do that one. Trent just comes through the lane and deleted. That feels so good now. That it's the only time in my life I've wanted to play Blitzcrank. But watching him just delete that shield instantly on the back of that like flex animation, very cool. I'm also like I'm trying to see if he actually popped the shield there too because I saw the gray health on the Tom Kench. I'm not even sure if Norskarn reacted for that one. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Either way, got the kill. Ignar, Ignar got the kill, and that's what matters. And now they have a bit of vision, and that's going to be a hook. Ooh. Felt a breeze on his backside, Humanoid. Was a little nervous on that one. Now has to walk away. And checking in on the state of the game, of course, Splice still with a 1.5k, 1.6k gold lead. Kiana very much ahead. Humanoid taking the cold ult is delaying some of these early power spikes. And uh, overall, Spice had the advantage, but need to do more with it if they want to extend it. Yeah, and Kabe actually just sacrificed his own lane a little bit right there. It seemed like there was maybe going to be a play up towards the Herald, so both Kabe and Norskarin made that big rotation up towards that side of the map. There didn't end up being any action, so at the same time, Upset was just full pushing that wave in down bottom lane. Kabe tonight a little bit of golden experience, um, which will ultimately not mean a whole lot in terms of the state of the game, but these are the tiny little things that can tend to add up if you're what, Spice and trying to play this 100% game. For now, Odawane visit Chachi going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Conqueror proc for Odawane, but has to be careful without the Dark and Blade cooldown up. Can't really maximize that healing. Visit Chachi playing with so much confidence on the top side, and the CS lead continues to grow. Odo starts this Gromp, and I don't think this is what he wanted. Cersei coming in. It's been a long time. We'll see if they can get something done here. Stepping through Odawane. Oh, no, it's too little. No, he might be able to get it. Visit Chachi makes it out with an inch of his life. Such a close play. Almost the outplay there for Odwane. Vitachi able to flash on out of there. And Kabe TP's in up topside too, so we're in a full reset now, or full lane swap. Zerse can start up this Rift Herald, not caring too much about the Cloud Drake being on the bottom side of the map. It's a big power play out of them, but look at this. Ignar is now rotated in towards the river and should be able to stop this move from Zerse. Sneaky Blitzcrank. Ooh. It's a teleport too. Zerse does a lot of damage, but is very, very squishy. Ignar, fishing, not gonna find it. We'll walk away. This is fantastic. the walk of shame after you missed that. Yeah, it's fishing simulator, really. We're, we're playing some Stardew Valley right fish. now. See what he can get. <laughs> oh, no. Ignar now has been locked up. The play might just turn on him. Norskarin instantly flashes out, though. Shalka have the man advantage here. Now it's Humanoid, though, on the backside. Maybe he can get something done. The Jin ultimate has been used. Top hooked, pulled in, locked up in silence. But Norskarin gets taken down. Upset has found a kill. Trick in the midst of everything. Might just get taken down. Odawane tries to get something back. But oh no, Vizachachi is here. And you cannot get away from this Nar. He will find the kill. Kabe grabs one as well. The wall team gets it to work right there for Splice. Big ultimate. Chachi still has Chachi. his. He smacks him into the wall. Upset now in trouble. Jin has to respect the potential here. Upset could try to go in, but Jin does a lot of damage. The crit almost prepped. Zerse now instantly moving in the mid lane. Splice are not afraid to up the tempo of this game. They've got Stalk on the back foot, and they are pushing in for more. Absolutely love this, too. 15 seconds before the tower plates go down. They're going to be able to secure every single one of them in the mid lane. And just put a lot more gold on towards Zerse in the jungle. He's doing very, very well for himself so far. And the top side of the map for Splice right now is monstrous. Humanoid given a small advantage early, finally able to spend that coal money. You can see Vizichachi steadily building a lead. 30 CS on the top side of the map, and 
how this fight turns against Schalke. Yep, teleports come in from both sides towards the start here, but I think the big play you have to watch is Cersei coming in for this big ultimate up against the wall. Corsair gets hooked, but then it's a three-man knock into Ooh. a four-man stun against the wall. That is why it is so scary to fight against Splice in, Splice in these tight corridors. And Chachi didn't even have his ultimate right there. That could have been even worse for Schalke had, they, had he had that spell up. If he had had a flash right there, he most certainly would have flashed and probably triple killed with the ult into Wallop into Boulder Toss. Ooh. And if Plates can tell a story, the story they're telling us now is Splice just smashed. Yeah, Splice just we, We're at 1.5k. Remember, folks, wow. this was just a few minutes ago. It was like, ah, oh, 1.5k. Shalka are fighting back. Ignar made that cool play where he hooked Norskaren and killed him. Uh, not anymore. This is a 5k lead. Odawamne does not exist. It looks like a champion, but it's a really big creep, I promise you. <laughs> Can't even revive, man. It's not. It's not his fault. He was, you know, he's not put into a winning matchup here in the situation, and uh -oh. it has gone from bad to worse. Zersei says, "Hello, we used to play together. You remember those days? I sure do. Killing spree for Zersei. Yowza! That's brutal. That was a lot of damage. I was just about to say. Remember, Zersei, all you got to do now, as Splice, you have this big lead, split up the map, and have Zersei go around killing people inside of the jungle. Just trail behind your solo laners right here. That's what he does with Humanoid, and they're able to pick up a kill and the tower and just push this game forward. And for Splice, 8374, very close in the standings, really only losing uh, to other top teams, and reminding us how they got their spot at the top. Jeez. Don't stand against walls, folks. It's a dangerous, dangerous thing. Let's be very clear, though, about the Splice team, because we were very disappointed with them. Yes. Yes. Oh, yeah. It was yes. Woo. about as inty as games can get between sure. Splice and Vitality just yesterday. And this was one of our teams that was solidly top three. Schalke, it seemed like sort of a pipe dream that they were trying to break into that top three. But now Splice have come back after probably some very stern words out of Duke after yesterday's match. I mean, just looking at his face when he came up to the stage to congratulate his team, quote unquote, uh, I'm sure they were spoken to deeply about that game. And now they look much more cohesive. You have comfort for Zersei here on this Kiana pick. It looks so good Okay, for him. okay, but explain to me, like, you make dad mad, you go home, and then he like gives you ice cream and you can play Kiana like that? That's a lot of faith to go from yesterday and say, hey, we're gonna let you play a new champion rather than putting you on like something simple and boring like Jarvan. Hey, I mean, if, if what you need to pop off against Shalka is something like this to give Xersei the ability to take something that you can then carry into the mid and late game with, I'm all for it right here. No, I don't think that's anyone's first thought when they saw Vi uh, Vitality's game uh, just yesterday, the game against Vitality just yesterday. But so far, everything seems to be working now for Splice. And the only question is, can they now close with this comp? Very good question. Difficult situation for Shalka. Obviously, have some fantastic scaling options. This year will always be that. But falling behind a Quirky very often feels like a death sentence. And additionally, you have the lethality. Okay. One of the most. Oh. Either Humanoid is like super big brain or is just very lucky. That is the second hook that I think he has basically unintentionally dodged. I think that was unintentional. He saw the ward come over the wall, so he had some. He didn't necessarily know it was Blitzcrank right there, but I'll give him the benefit. I'm going to credit him with like Spidey, Peter Tingle, you know? Yeah. Give me an idea. The, the Peter Tingle. Ah, classic. <laughs> That's a reference someone will get, which is important. <laughs> Otherwise, we're just never funny. Now, as we check in, that's Whoa. huge, but Humanoid, of course, manages to leave his way out. Root will come through as well. Zersei just going to grab a Water Blade once again. Ignar, this time fishing. Okay. Eventually, it's going to work. There's a BM zoom in, observers. I appreciate it. <laughs> Next time, just go a little bit further. You miss 100% of the hooks you don't throw, folks. Wait for it. Look at that. Ward. He's oh, he's like, nope. Ooh! That was clean. That was clean. And guys, it's not like Ignar is not good at Blitzcrank. He's 6-2 on the champion. He's actually a Blitzcrank monster. He's just, he's getting a little outplayed right now. In the mind games of Blitzcrank hooks, Ignar is behind. And they're uh, they're really trying to put a lot of resources towards this top side of the map. I mean, Shalka, they really just need one hook to land. That's one of the things yeah. about this champion is it can look real bad for a long and time. One hook connects and you win. And I do also want to note that that 6-2 record is, is in Europe. We did not include his LCK stats. For those of you who remember, the, the, the best of we the best talk quality. We don't about BBQ. The best of the best quality was not we don't the talk best about of the best times team. for young for young Ignar and Trick. But now, Shalka doing actually a lot to stall out this game as much as they can. And the good news is the Azir is basically even in terms of farm overall. 
The Jin, however, solid lead. The Kiana very much ahead. And my biggest concern is right now is that Odawamne is very far behind as Vinar is going completely for a split push build with the Blade of the Rune King. Yeah, and this sort of circles us back to the fact that Splice, their team fight, they don't have like a beefy front line, really. Like, Nara can do some of it, but with this itemization, not really going to be all that <laughs> successful. So they're trying to itemize into more of a 1-3-1 setup where it can just be Zerse running around the map and killing people. And that's how they try to push this game forward. It's not about trying to match Shalka in these five versus fives necessarily, unless they can take a really good fight with some of the tools they have, right? Because you have a Tom Kench to make sure you have a numbers advantage. That's what they're going to be looking to work with in the next five or so minutes. And the difficulty, of course, for Shalka at this point, it's very hard for them to hold on to any one part of the map without giving up something else in return. So you can see total control on the bottom side coming in now from Splice in terms of what vision has been set up. Shalka in return, though, have gotten a bit of vision around the Baron area. Downside is, is that it's kind of a bluff when they threaten Baron. They just are really not strong enough to try and force it without Splice knowing at this point. Yeah, right now what we've seen from Trick in his path, he's just actually holding hands with Abadage, going up into top lane multiple times, just sitting in the lane, making sure this Azir can farm, because it's very a real possibility with this turret being so low that Splice make one move where they call the Tom Kench up to the top lane. With Xerse, they instantly dive that tower and get the kill. So both Ignar and, and uh, Trick have been on permanent protection duty for Abadage, while they just allow Upset, who's a little bit more safe, to just pick up all these waves that crash in towards that second mid lane tower. And the small silver lining in this 6k gold deficit cloud for Shalka is that Upset has now finally gotten the Q evolve. He was 280 off, and right as he hit level 12, it was enough to shift over. Now as he finishes the Rage Blade, I believe level 13 still is the point where he'll be able to grab enough attack speed that he gets both those evolves. Very critical. Oh my. And fights to come. But now the Baron is going to be started up. Hugely aggressive move. Upset is now TPing in. The Kai'Sa can start to shred through the Baron. This is going to be pretty big. The rest of the team is now coming. Corky moving in. Tom Kench now bringing the rest of the team in. The curtain call coming out. They spotted everything. 3k and dropping. They know this is their disaster moment. Huge ulti coming out. And he steals it too. He gets the walk away. Hands in the air pound. With a fight, no doubt, going in the favor of Shaka no Fear. You do not set foot over that wall. Since the rest of the team they now fall back. Because Achachi's still alive, running for their life. Odawamne gets the refresh. The double kill comes in for upset. Still difficult situation. Disastrous for Shalka even. But they are holding on. Shalka knew they were falling further further and further behind without a way to get back into the game. So they make the brave call to start up that Baron. They win the team fight, but it was Zerse in that clutch moment that comes over the wall with just a second to spare and steals away that clutch Baron. And I'll be honest, hugely confident display coming in from Shalka, but when it comes down to it, those are the kind of crazy moves that you have to be willing to make to come out on top in a game where you are so far behind. But as we look at this, I think Kai's on the jungler to see how this is stolen. Yeah, he used the ultimate around the wall. Look at that stun on both Trick and Abadagi just for some extra damage and flashes over. 73 HP, it's an early smite there from Trick that Cersei was able to react to in the heat of the moment. Beautiful stuff from them. And of course, a great wall to knock Chachi back in towards the pit that ends up allowing Shalka to pick up one more kill on towards Norskaren. But all in all, that's still vict victory for Splice. And now, ooh, pressure starts to mount. We look back at that last team fight, you can see the Azir is getting stronger and stronger. Have to see who can come out on top of the middle of the fight. So that's a package for the Quirky and still Baron buff for a few members of Splice. Keep your eyes on how Splice walk into these lanes, though. It's going to be a 1-2-2 one, two, two setup at the moment with Chachi going solo up topside, Kabe and Norskaren knowing they can rotate to either of these side lanes so, so quickly, while Xerse just flutters between mid and bottom lane whenever those waves do start pushing on forward. Nothing is better for this Splice composition than having a Baron buff. The Corky and Nar in side lanes are going to be so, so deadly. So you must see Shaka make a proactive play. That's top lane on Chachi. Is a Chachi now running so classic. He's going to get stunned up, locked down. They are going to kill him. He's so incredibly squishy. The shutdown is there, and it goes goes into the hands of Upset. Hugely crucial. We'll stop a bit of the progress here. Humanoid will trade it for a tier 2 tower. As well as the one in the mid. Still disadvantage for Shalka, but overall good to get the pick. Right, it's a two tower trade for one pick that delays more of the Baron. Ultimately, Shalka are okay with sacrificing these objectives outside of their base. And they even have a window where they can then look to make another play. With 25 more seconds on visit Chachi, this Baron buff is pretty much out of commission. Good to stop it. And if you're on the side of Shalka, it's uh, a brief respite, a brief break. But definitely still has to be hurting there for a trick, knowing that at the end of the day, the reason they have to give up so much is because of a fumbled smite. Still good to capitalize here. Right after this play, Vizichachi buys a QSS. 
uh, to try to stop this from happening again. Yeah, Chachi just stepping up to that wave there. No vision inside of the top side jungle. I think that was a little bit greedy of him to push on forward. Of course, he didn't know the rest of his team was in position to respond for objectives. So ultimately, he does give over a shutdown, but does net his team the time they need to pick up the tower in both the mid lane and the bottom lane. And now the QSS on him and on Norskaren. The hope is that that's all Splice need to stop this engage potential from Shalka. And have to see maybe if Upset can find one of those infamous Kaisa picks where you are able to land the Void Seeker and then go into the back line. Jin with the force shot, obviously incredibly, incredibly strong, but if he doesn't have that prepped and it's gonna take all four autos for him to get to it, then Kaisa can just shred through that health bar. Yeah, I mean, all eyes are on Upset. But they're gonna Once keep again. going, they're gonna keep fishing for this one. Instead, Hero is just gonna turn oh, on the dog. Okay, good bye. They're willing to take the one for one, however. Good kill in the end, but now upset the unstoppable one as Abadage bites off more than he can shoot. Yeah, that's the thing here. Yes, Humanoid gets that big one-for-one -one trade. They're turning it on towards Abadage, but upset is getting fed. Now, three items on the Kai'Sa should have his E-Evolve as well, so the invisibility there will be on that champion. Now, five kills on him as well. Like, there's no way Shulk will win this game if it's not upset popping off in these team fights. And upset is a guy that we just inevitably have to look at when it comes to Shalka as a whole. Him versus Kabe right now upset. Look at that damage percentage. There's what's important. Splice, a lot of people have been stepping up to carry. That's why the damage percent is lower for him. But on the side of Shalka, when push comes to shove, yes, Abadaga has gotten better, but 32.7 is a huge number. He is the carry of this team. Yeah, it's exactly the story of this game, too, where we see Upset taking much more responsibility in terms of overall damage, while on the other side, you know, Xerse, Humanoid having much better games, so not as much reliance on Kabe in a match like this. But Kabe's still someone that you have to look out for. I mean, he has a oh, three-item yeah. Jin and He's not weak by any means, Dracos. No, absolutely not. And my favorite thing about this dynamic between the Jin and the Corky is Corky is like an 80 carry pretending to be a mage, and Jin is a mage pretending to be an 80 carry. <laughs> Literally just spells in, a, in your fourth shot. Yep. Yes. Like basically a right click as Jin is an ability, you know? <laughs> Very short cooldown. Basically, Yasuo yeah, Hukio. It's actually true. <laughs> You've all been bamboozled, AD carry players. You're actually playing a mage when you pick Jin. You've been tricked. AD carries are terrible. Except for in the mid lane. Uh, can he get it? He doesn't even try. This is the wall. This That feels so bad. Literally every single time. The gauntlet has been set, ladies and gentlemen. This is a mini game. Obviously, there's a lot of stakes for Shalka and for Splice, but there are stakes for Ignar too. If he hooks someone over that specific wall, this game is a victory. I don't care who wins. This game is a victory for Ignar. If he doesn't, it's... It's not a victory for Splice, but it's a little embarrassing for Ignar. That's all I'll say. He's gonna have a chance, though. We got Baron <laughs> spawning in 30 seconds. Maybe he tries to come in from this angle and won't have a chance to pick up that hook, but he must be able to land something. And, and pivotally, on, like, on one of these, there's so many good targets on Splice. You can literally hook anyone besides a Meganar, I think. If you hook a Meganar, you're probably trolling. Anyone else? Don't know good. why we say Meganar, but I uh, appreciate the uh, intonation there. <laughs> All right, don't hook Chachi is a new game. See, it was already hard enough to hook anybody, and now you're adding new rules, and I don't feel like that's very fair, Ender. But one thing that we mentioned is very important. Just bring it back to champ select. Control of the river, crucial if you want to find picks. Control of the river is not in any way in favor of Shalka. Have to remember, they're still at a 8K gold deficit. They have an Inferno, which bounces out a bit, but things are going to be very difficult for this team. Yeah, the biggest difference in terms of DPS in this in this fight is going to be Humanoid over Abadage, right? Humanoid finishing off, you know, some big flat AD items in terms of the Essence Reaver also has the attack speed and the rapid fire cans. This guy absolutely hurts the moment. So, but he already saw him in the 1v4 get that free kill against Abadage. What the observers just pointed to by jumping up and highlighting Xerse is the other giant discrepancy in DPS oh, yes. is the fact that <laughs> there's a 3 AD item, Kiana, who can one-shot upset. He can also get one shot, though. Game. Can also get one shot. It's and that, that is the shots. biggest concern for Splice here is, again, they're not built for the best 5v5. Yes, if they lay up their spells, they can instantly destroy you. But in a, in a long front-to-back team fight, I don't actually favor this side. Humanoid, though, spotting out a bit of vision as he gets ready to push forward, has the package to escape, so it feels comfortable moving into Fog of War. Now, Shalka, seeing him on the bottom side, feel more comfortable to move in to contest a bit of this vision being laid down. Have to be careful, though. Xerse with the Water Blade can just one-shot Ignar. Yeah, I mean, Shalka are realizing right now that Splice can't really commit hard on towards this Baron. Instead, they're splitting up across the map, 1-3-1 at the moment, to get these side lane champions going. Humanoid bent down deep in the ball lane. Ooh, Abadage, though, taking a lot of damage oh, from the no. package. Here comes Upset, but they don't like any CC. He can't find a way in. Oh, Humanoid just gonna grab that one. Easy peasy. It's a little awkward. 
there from Abadage. I mean, in 43 seconds now, where Splice have an absolute highway to this Baron. Yes, yeah, so what does Splice do? They commit four on Baron. Humanoid has TP, but he can also just push in this bottom lane. Upset is being pulled away from this team fight. They're going to have to give up Baron. They're making the call. They want to push down on a Humanoid instead. Upset, though, level 16 to level 18. Humanoid does a lot of damage. He's dodging, but it doesn't matter. Huge shield. Can he get it? Upset goes through, finds the kill, shut down. The TP now coming in as well. Visit Chachi. Not sure about that with the flash. No. Does it hit the hook? No, Ignar. He's now running. He's so incredibly fast with the hyper, and they're just going to back off. They give up the Baron. They get the kill that they wanted, but a bit of a comedy of errors there on the bottom side. It's really unfortunate that hook doesn't land onto Chachi, too, because Shalka had an opportunity to break the Baron buff on both side lane split pushers. Now with Gnar retaining that Baron, it's absolutely miserable. Now, oh, the burn damage from the package. Doing a lot right there. One more auto, all they needed. And then Upset plays this really nicely, I think, trying to use his ultimate and flash to dodge away from some critical abilities. W doesn't land, of course, and uh, walks into some, but then gets on over from the back, dodges away from the ultimate. Don't think it was ultimately necessary, but, uh, oh no, you're not Here gonna do go. him like this, right? He looks death in the eyes, he walks away. That hyper proc, so strong. Can't really The catch. worst part is, you can just hold that spell. Just keep running at Gnar. Eventually, he's gonna be in a position where he's stuck against the wall and can't juke. Ignar felt it in his bones, and I'm not gonna doubt that. I'm gonna doubt it because he missed. <laughs> he had his mo- it a lot of criticism, that's all Let's I'm saying. Let's look at Upset's items, though, because this guy's strong. <laughs> and that's what's important. Interesting. At the end of the day, Shock War caught between a rock and a hard place. They got something out of that play, which is the best that they can do. But Splice are completely and totally dominating in this game. Of course, be sure to stick around for the Poach Mask, which Splice, win or lose, Coach Duke is going to be there. And we're going to discuss Xerxes, Kiana, and more. Unravel the secrets of this pick. Is it good in solo queue? Is it only good in pro play? Can I play it? Will Ender report me if I do? These are the questions we need answered, folks. Along with, can Ignar land a hook? Sorry, I gotta, I gotta keep bringing it back. <laughs> Ignar, you're putting too much pressure on him. I wonder if Duke can, can talk us through that. Performance anxiety. He's gotta go. Will he find the avenue? For now, no, is the answer. And Splice continue to shove in here on the top side. The Baron buff backing them up. Of course, the poke from a Corky, as well as a Jin is gonna make it very difficult for Shaka to center to these towers. The looming threat of a Blitzcrank hook is gonna mean that Splice give them a decent amount of respect, but may not be enough. It's really hard though, I think, for Splice to actually use this Baron, uh, importantly because they did lose on Humanoid earlier. So right now, instead of pressuring three lanes simultaneously, it is just the two between top lane and mid lane. And there's pretty decent wave clear on the side of Shalka at this point in the game, so they can knock away those minion waves. There's always, also always the threat of a Blitzcrank hook, so it's risky to ever step up towards a tower. We'll Might just go. Abadage now leaps forward. Upset now sees his opportunity to go in. The flash out to safety. Doesn't have his flash from the previous engage. And the turn and burn comes in on the current call. They need to body block. Trick is there. They set up the tower as well to secure their retreat. Will walk away, but they're giving up a mid lane inhibitor. In the meantime, Odo Omni is just forced to sit back and watch as this happen. He uses his ult. He's going to try to chase someone down, but nothing is going to happen there either. Shalka. Splice just continue to get the best of them in every exchange. Yeah, I mean, we're actually really confused right there, because I think Shalka were in a position where they could have just sat inside of their base and cleared away these minion waves without forcing a play. The pressure wasn't ultimately there from the side of Splice. They've been taking it very slow throughout the entire duration of this Baron buff. They commit five people to the top lane trying to make some sort of hero play to shut down the last seconds of this Baron, but ultimately sacrifice that mid lane tower, which is a really big deal. Absolutely. And here now, Single minion there, getting ready to push in. Oduwami gonna do what he can to clear the waves. There's a still only level 15. Getting closer and closer though to having the max rank and the alt there. And very difficult to get anything done here. Once again, eyes, here we go. Eyes on, no, all right, never mind. The hex flash, last time he did it, he landed the hook, that's all I'm saying. There's no flash on Norskaren, no flash on Kave, but no time for Shalka, as the inhib just goes down. And this, there's a few rules against Spice. One. Don't go to 40 minutes. And two, don't let them choke you out in a game. And Splice are absolutely choking Shalka out. And we're getting closer to 40 minutes. So really, things are going from bad to worse very rapidly for Shalka. See, but that's that's the thing. I think actually the later we get into this game, I'm more like, okay, Shalka have more time to pick up some items, especially on this Azir, because obviously right now Upset is doing just fine. And yes, all of Splice's champions, except for the Tom Kench, are going to scale into doing incredible, incredible damage. But I do think that eventually we do reach a point where Shalka's team fights are very, very winnable. Ooh, but Ender, it's it's hard for me to believe at this point. Given the potential for Zerse to one-shot someone, given 
But I'm, I mean, I'm just thinking, right? Like, you have all these paper, tools to try and yeah. keep you at range, right? The Azir ultimate, if you have your cooldowns up, it's very easy to reactively dodge, I think, against the longer range Keon ultimates. Maybe not the initial, like, R Quick against burst, the wall, yeah. but that big AoE around the walls, you can dodge away from those, and it's not that difficult. So I do see a world in which they can jump back at the initial splice engage, assuming they have good vision to protect themselves against some sort of a flank coming through. TK ult, oh, Odawana gonna try to make it out to safety, can't just dash over this wall, but he fumbles it! That's not at all what you want to see! No! And top lane, Abadage goes down to Cersei. Oh, from bad to worse, that's the one person you don't want to hook! That was the only rule! You broke the only rule! Don't hook the... It's disaster, it's a slaughter. Upset though does go godlike in the meantime. The jungler will be traded, but Cersei, Cersei. on the way down. Upset is now wondering what went wrong in this game that he would be caught between four members of Splice. Ignar running for the hills, Upset. Getting ready to be put in a body bag. Six feet under is the name of the game for him. How far down can they go? Splice, an absolutely dominant performance. This Kiana jungle setting things off right. Splice moving up. No doubt they are top three in the LEC, but can they push on to top two as they take down Shalka in a definitive win? And at the end of the day, fantastic showing from Splice. Once again, a good look overall. Yesterday, of course, the exception to that. But after yesterday's lackluster performance, where they did still find the win, importantly so, they turned it around. It was clean this game, honestly, from, from start to finish. Outside of one or two picks on the Vizichachi, the rest was Splice Wallace. Yeah, and coming into this match, our eyes on the Splice side were on Xersei and Humanoid. Well, what happens, there's a level three gank in the mid lane, Xersei gets the ball rolling, then uh, Humanoid turns into the split push demon, of course. Got caught out a couple of times in the end, but the pressure alone was enough to slowly choke out Shalka from ever having a chance to come back in this one. And a lot of those exchanges, very, very brutal to watch. Of course, there's a lot of good ups, uh, good pro view options in that past game. I'm sure people have nice highlight clips out for upset Ignar and Cersei, depending on who they chose to watch. And when you look at this, it's a... Uh, Honestly, Splice, I, okay, I'm gonna say this, and it, people are gonna get mad at me, specifically Fnatic fans, Splice might be the second best team in our league. It's possible, I mean, right now, like, the top seems like it could be a little bit shaky, you know, with Fnatic dropping some games here and there. That's when you say the top, you mean Fnatic. I mean, I mean, Fnatic, I mean, I, we are thinking G2 Splice could be too. Shaky, we were concerned about Splice too that's after true. yesterday's that's game. true. But literally everything changed. It seems to be more of a blip on the radar for this squad because this was classic Splice, it was calm, cool, collected, strong early performance from Cersei, and then just, you know, slowly draining your opponent's will to live over the next 35 minutes. <laughs> now, of course, owning the head-to-head -head over Shalka with this win here, wins in the second half being valued or not owning the head-to-head -head against G2 is rough, but they're very, in, they're in an excellent position now, Ender, to, to move up and, and to get that by. And of course, if you're not familiar with our playoff format, that's massive. Just by getting top two, you are guaranteed to go to Athens, whether it's in the loser's bracket or the winner bracket, we have to see, but Regular season is so incredibly important, so for them to not only be developing as a team, but to be getting wins when they matter is is massive for Splice. It's going to be absolutely huge, but ultimately, at the end of the day, this is a team that is trying to prove itself. has been a long time since they've been in one of those big final situations. They're on the road to do it right now, and I think those key players we keep mentioning are definitely the ones trying to carry them to that final destination. It was... Fantastic for Zerze. We keep singing his praises. You broke down his jungle pathing, but not only is he intelligent about the game, it clears he's got the mechanics as well with some of those Kiana plays. And uh, it's honestly exciting to see the continued development of Splice. We heard Xander talk about it as, as him from someone outside kind of looking in. We saw that, like, Splice are kind of that yeah, middle of the pack team. Like, what do you say about Splice? They got long games, but now they're getting better, better, better every single week. And now you can't not talk about Splice when you talk about the top of Europe. However, here, I want to talk to you about Kia Player of the Game. At LOL Esports on Twitter is the place. Visit Chachi, Cersei, Humanoid. What? It's the one in the middle. Yeah, that There's, one. That's the only one that matters, folks. That one right that's, there. <laughs> bam, that one. I'm pointing at it right now. I mean, he played Kia on a jungle. Right? Like he would have won if they just won the game and he played Kiana Jungle. I would have just given it to him because that's super cool. But then he also like popped off and, and carried and like one shot Abadage <laughs> in the late game. But uh. Honestly, to get more insight on Splice's win, let's head over to Lore and Humanoid. Thank you, guys, and thank you, Humanoid, for joining me. We don't get to talk to you that much, so you had an interesting week, if I may say. Can you tell me about it? Well, yeah, yesterday's game was 
a bit rough for us. I think we played really bad, but yeah, it's a 2-0, it's a so it feels really good. And yeah, this week I think we didn't play our best, but I think we are still improving a lot. And uh, if we can show it on stage for the next weeks, it will be like really good and we will be a really good team. I agree on that. I mean, not only you guys are in a good spot for playoffs, but you can actually dream about Athens at the end of the splits. You were in a good position as well in spring, but you stopped uh, during the playoffs. So how is it different this time? Yeah, I think this split we are way better than last split. I think last split we didn't really have much of a chance for top two at least. I think this split we can do it and I think yeah, we are all more used to playing with each other as well, so we are a better, just a better team this split. It may be a bold statement here, but you are better than last split as well. Do you agree on that? Uh, yeah, I think, I think I improved a lot from last split. Mm -hmm. And Caps yesterday said that you may qualify for the next baby Caps in the LEC. So do you agree with this statement? The next big mid laner? Uh, well, I think I'm definitely at the top. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if if I'm like the second best or the third best, so I don't, I don't really know about that. But yeah, I think it feels a lot to me if, if Caps thinks that I'm good, so yeah. Very humble, as expected. Now one last question for you. Kiana, better laner or jungler? I think she's really broken in both roles, so uh, yeah. <laughs> but she's really fun. I think, I think mid lane is better because she's just... I want to play her, so right. that's why. Well, thank you for the insights. We'll see what the analysts think about that, because we have a pre-game ready. Thank you, Law. We are joined by Splice's coach, Duke, and I'm going to kick things off, Duke. Today's game, a little bit better than yesterday's game. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> <laughs> what, 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 what happened yesterday? I'd like to touch on that one before we kind of move on to this one. Um, but you guys won in the end, right? It was a little bit shaky in the mid-game, though. Yeah, I don't know if any team won yesterday, but I think Vitality <laughs> should have won. Uh, it was definitely our worst game uh, this split yesterday. Mm. I think we try to work on really new stuff uh, this week in terms of our mid game because mid game is our biggest problem. And I think we got also a bit complacent after finally getting a bit of recognition for uh, our performances. And during the end of the of last week, we yeah we didn't we were not really focused in scrims enough. And it showed on stage where we got the easiest part of what we wanted to work on while forgetting the hard part. And it looked like we were playing like a challenger any team in the end. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? And that, I love your honesty, to be honest, yeah. uh, because we were quite critical ourselves of the game yesterday, um, but it definitely felt like that you had a much better performance today. Mm -hmm. uh, and like, I, what we're really curious about is what you came in with the draft for today, because when I saw it, I was asking myself, okay, how exactly does this comp work? Because uh, it feels like that you've got like a lot of pieces. You have a bit of team fighting, a bit of split pushing. So I'm really curious as to what you think, like what are the main goals of this kind of comp? And with the draft, we can do pretty much everything. The thing is, uh, we wanted a bit of a way to pressure bot uh, because usually in the Koki is your matchup. While um, Koki is usually winning games in terms of statistic, I think it's also really player dependent. Mm -hmm. And Abedage is really strong Azir. And Azir usually wins in the early game. So we knew that uh, they would most likely have mid prio for the early game. So we wanted something to be able to contest a bit more on the bot side. Uh, we, expecting, we expected the Blitzcrank, so we didn't ban it uh, uh, for our blind pick time Kench. And Jin time Kench is overall a strong lane. Uh, Kobe is excellent on, on Jin. Mm -hmm. And it also helps us have the range advantage in case they want to team fight, they have to come into us uh, while also having a good setup for the 1v1 with Tam Kench being able to cover the side where we have two winning side, lane, side laners in the, in the mid-game. And you drafted uh, Kiana for Xerxes and mm -hmm. he performed incredibly well in this game. Talk to us a little bit about what the goal was for Xerxes on Kiana. And Kiana is one of, uh, of the champions where you can just go wild and that's what I want from Xerxes in the early game. Uh, he, he just... He's, Basically, Kiana is a good version of Zinzao, where you can just super aggressive, a uh, lot of damage, CC, good ganking. So, yeah, he did what, like, we talked a lot about our early game. That was also one of our problems, especially in scrims. Uh, and we l talked a lot about the communication we want to have around the early game, and I'm really proud of what they did today. So we were able to have Kiana to kind of bring a bit of uh, the X factor, I would say, in the early game. And then in a one for one setup, she will just like this, for example, in the H rocks, just catch the side laners and, uh, yeah send them back home. So the ultimate debate, do you think she's a better jungler or do you think she's a better laner? Um, I think she's strong in both, but the thing is, I think on mid lane you can't just pick it mid lane. Like, uh, it's, That's fair. Like, you, you, if she has a good matchup mid, mid, lane, mid lane, she's maybe even stronger because you get even more resources, so you can one shot, one shot them even more. But, uh, but yeah, in jungle, she's, I would say, more 
Yeah, she's easier to, easier to draft maybe in jungle. I do find that uh, when you put her in the jungle, I think there's a bit of agency on you to try and yeah. snowball as well. Because if you don't get ahead, as you said, it can be difficult to get some of those resources. Yep. But I think Zerse demonstrated that you can quite effectively snowball on the chat. And it wasn't just the early game that Zerse had an impact. He had that huge Baron steal, which talking to, to you, Vedias, you felt was a really influential part of the game. So I felt like that the actual setup from Schalke here was good. And I wonder if you felt that this was a bit of a mistake on your team's part, Duke, because it felt like that you lost lost control around Baron, and while your team recognized it, this could have almost been a swing factor that mm -hmm. brought Schalke back into the game. Yeah, we had a bit of the same problem against, uh, I don't know which team actually, where, where they sneaked to Baron like this. Um, I mean, I think we were still a bit slow in the mid game, uh, setting up the 1v1. I think we should have maybe sent Koki bot a bit before, so we gave them a bit too much uh, way to deal with pressure. Um, we were kind of expecting it too, but maybe we were a bit overconfident in our ability to destroy them in team fights. Which the problem is with this Baron is that it puts us in a defavorable position on how we want to team fight because our, we have, I think we have stronger team fighting than their comp if they come into us um, and they can't find flanks. And the thing is, by going on the last minute into the Baron to get the Baron. We're in a position where we are actually flanking ourselves from all angle, and it was actually a bad team fight. So I. All, like we, we'll, I'll have to rewatch it for sure. Uh, I think our mid game was okay, could be better for sure. Uh, but the setup of, of the Baron, I think it was more how we wanted to approach the team fight that was wrong here. It's very fair. So we have our key player of the game, and oh, surprise, surprise! It is Zerxe with 62% of the vote. How did he only get 62%? I mean, <laughs> he, like, he had an absolutely insane. Well, I mean, game. a lot of fans are probably voting for both Humanoid and Chachi, yeah. who also had a fantastic game. I think Humanoid's now up to like 13 or 14 solo kills overall this split. Who's you know? So I feel like a lot of Splice members have been stepping up. Uh, uh, I feel like it's great to hear from Duke because I feel like a lot of the things that he's talking about, we've talked yeah. a lot about and we recognize as well. Um, and I'm excited to see where Splice can develop because if we ignore yesterday's game, I do think that there is a lot of evidence to suggest that right now Splice is our second best team in Europe. And the only hope now is that you can continue this performance all the way up to playoffs. Yeah, I think it's, it's tough to say if we are the second best team, I think we are among the top tier uh, and, uh, and we proved it. but. I also heard like people say that we would be capped and uh, and that we wouldn't improve afterwards. And I think that's the biggest mistake about our lineup. I think um, this lineup of Splice has actually a lot of room to grow again. And when I see the games we are playing on stage, especially, um, and even in scrims actually, like there are so much room to improvement and we know the, the way to do it, but we have to take a bit of our time. And I don't see us stopping here. So maybe we are not the clear cut second team, but I think we can even become the first. Well, Duke, nice. you'll, happy, you'll be happy to know that I'm actually a Splice convert now. I came into this week, I wasn't really sure kind of of your identity, but I'm a Splice convert now. We actually have got Duke on post-game lobby with us after the, uh, the whole broadcast. If you want to hear more from Duke and about Splice, uh, as well as his thoughts on the rest of the league, he'll be there in post-game lobby. But coming up next, we've got G2 Esports looking to take their seventh win in a row against SK Gaming. We'll be right back. <laughs> 